Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's all fantastic. Everything here is great. Um, so far, no symptoms. That's a good thing, right? Like we hope that we hope that nothing comes of this and it's all just, uh, you know, passes us by, but so far, no symptoms. Uh, that being said, I did take a half day today because I, you know, I have one kid that didn't go to school today is here and, um, I needed to get some appointments taken care of. So it just, uh, it was easier that way. And, um, I ended up, guess what? This is still sitting here unfinished, unsanded. I did go buy finish today. I'm going to use spray lacquer just because it's easy. Um, on something like this, it'd be really hard to kind of get wipe on finish everywhere. But instead, <laughs> um, I told you I had a game I wanted to review, and I we will do that soon. Um, but I want to play it a few more times. And that is Arc Nova. Arc Nova from Capstone Games. Um, it'll be in stores next month, but I pre-ordered it long ago. It was an Essen release for Spielworks, maybe? I, no, no. Uh, Friederland or Freuderland or whatever um, and Capstone licensed it and I've played it uh, we played it Wednesday night it took about four hours <laughs> to play our first four player game and I've played a few solo games and I'm I'm in I'm very much in love with the game uh, it's very much a um, I've heard people call it terraforming zoo and that's semi true uh, I think that from the terraforming Mars on forward, anytime you see uh, cards that that give you icons and then cards that require icons to build, like people just assume that's terraforming Mars. I guess it is. I mean, I think that system has been around for a while, so I don't what I don't necessarily equate it, but whatever. Uh, it's, it's a, if you, it's definitely the kind of game that if you like Terraforming Mars, I think you'll very much like this game. And, um, that's just neither here nor, that's not the, the, the point of this is not to review the game. But instead, uh, what I've done is designed a box insert, uh, for it. Because I'm crazy. Uh, because, um, I like to have things organized. So I came down here last night, um, I ordered sleeves, they were coming today, I came down last night and I mocked up a real quick quarter inch plywood insert with super glue, stuck it in, and my thoughts were that the cards would lay in this thing kind of at a 45. The cards are too tall to stand up in the box, but I thought I could lay them down at like an angle, and... It wouldn't work with this particular version because there's no bottom, so the cards would slide under this and get bent or whatever. But I got sleeves today, sleeved it, and realized that would not work. The sleeves would fit in the space that this provided, but they wouldn't lay at all. So uh, I, I set upstairs and I worked up an alternate layout so that I can break the cards up into three stacks. And I did that, and I made it, and it works. Kinda. The problem is, even in three stacks, like, with the fluffiness, you know, sleeves, when you get them, they're kind of puffy. The cards stick up above this just slightly. If you push down on them, they're below the top of this. But if, if you don't push down and they start to inflate, <laughs> they stick up. And that bothers me because I think that, you know, it's going to... Uh, it, it, it gives opportunity for cards to get bent as the game box gets shuffled around. So, unfortunately... What I really need to find is smaller um, bins. So I guess on the, you can see this picture in an action. I have uh, game trays that I bought off BoardGameGeek to put the player count or the player tokens in. I think that that's a much more elegant solution than dumping a baggie on the table because you really don't need to use the little extras all that often so it's nice to have them collected somewhere and they're not getting scattered or getting confused um, but the game trays if I could find something that's like half the width of a game tray 
that would hold all the player pieces. And so it would give me the ability to put the four pieces on the side of that box and extend the width of my tray over. And I could have three stacks going this way and then two stacks going this way. So I could have the cards really spread out. And then I wouldn't be so worried about it, about the cards lifting up above the top of the insert and then getting hurt. So I'm going to do some searching for a, um, an alternate version of those um, game trays. The problem is this one that I made today, I was fairly confident. I had a decent amount of this um, quarter inch plywood veneer, quarter inch um, like hardwood plywood. I don't know. This is some sort of tropical plywood. I had a decent amount of pieces like this size, which were great. I was able to rip them down into a bunch of strips. And, you know, I used a pin nailer and super glue to put it all together. So the problem is it's all assembled. It's not coming back apart in any way that makes it, you know, reconfigurable. If I, if I can find smaller trays, smaller parts trays, uh, I basically have to scrap the one that I made today and make another one. <laughs> so I think if I do that, I discovered I had some eighth inch plywood, I think this is. This isn't quite quarter inch. Of course, quarter inch plywood isn't really quarter inch either. I would guess this is eighth inch plywood, maybe a little, little bit heavier than like three thirty seconds or what a four thirty five thirty second, whatever, whatever an eighth inch is, and like one thirty second over that. So this is a slightly thinner. Um, maybe I can use that for the bottom so that there's more height inside the tray. But even with, um, I, I made the I made the top of my tray be in line with the tops of the game trays so that when the board sits on there it's nice and flat and that makes the box not close all the way which doesn't bother me but it bothers me so yeah I mocked up a thing and then I came down here I just spent it took me it only took me like an hour or so to make that insert that I showed uh, so it's not like I've I've lost a whole hour. It was actually a pretty enjoyable experience. Listen to a podcast. I got to use my pin nailer a bunch on quarter inch plywood, which I'd never tried before. Worked out beautifully uh, with super glue, no wood glue. Uh, I think it turned out really nice. It just kind of doesn't work. So for now, what I have done is I took, uh, I made these little blocks that represent a card in a sleeve and added an eighth of an inch to both sides. So there's wriggle room and I used this. I put it down in my in my tray and then use that to build the walls around. So I cut using this to set my miter gauge. I cut some like tops out of this stuff to put on top of the trays to hold the cards down so that they don't get bent. And I'm going to try that. And if that works, maybe I'm done. And maybe the sleeves will relax and they won't be puffy over time. I don't know. Did anybody care about anything I just said? It was a fun experiment. Maybe I should uh, make more board game inserts out of quarter inch plywood. I know lots of people do that, but it's funny that I was able to come down here in literally an hour. I listened to a one hour podcast. Well, it was probably an hour and a half. I listened to a podcast that was a little over an hour and a 15 minute follow up podcast to that. And I was done. Um, in that hour and a half, I was able to completely make a, bo a box insert. Whereas if I was trying to do that, like the laser cut versions that people make, it would probably have taken me multiple hours just to template it in the computer. <laughs> and then, you know, however long it takes to laser it, then clean up the laser and then assemble it. Like I was able to just come down here and make it. And it's much faster for me to just rip a bunch of pieces on a table saw and then glue them together real quick and I have a working prototype. So maybe I should do that more often. I don't know. It was kind of fun. Thank you for being here as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I don't know where the book is. Um, I appreciate you very much. I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should know to sound smart is a lammer gear. It is a noun meaning a large black bird of the vulture family. The world is just that Lamborghini or bearded vulture in the sky. Pico Iyer, a British-born essayist of Indian descent. Lamborghini. L-A-M-M-E-R-G-E-Y-E-R. -E 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 that must be a... Is that a British thing? Is that a...
Is that a European continent thing? Because I've never heard of such a thing. 